What's going on, people? We are Tottenham TV here. Tottenham for Sheffield United nil in a demolishment of Sheffield United at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium in the first of five cup finals, as Ryan Mason said. So now we've scored four goals in a cup final. But now, nah, jokes aside, I think that um, it was a good performance. I really believe that. I think the first yeah. 15 minutes, we did come out firing without getting that goal. And Sheffield United grabbed a bit more control in that game. But I think once we scored and once we went ahead, I think there was only one team uh, that was going to go on and win that game. Three absolutely delightful finishes from Gareth Bell, who I thought was man the match. And Hyun Son, I thought he was quite quiet throughout the game, but that goal, uh, he took it so well, reminiscent of that Arsenal goal um, at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium earlier on in the season. So I think it was a good day at the office for the players. I think it should uh, install a bit of confidence moving into the rest of the season. And, and it just proves why Gareth Bell should be playing at the moment. Yeah, look, it was it was a masterclass of finish from, from Gareth Bell. One uh, dink to finish over Ramsdale with a lovely ball over the top from um, Serge Aurier with the first one. Second one, a um, brilliant speed to get, run away um, inside his own half and a great through ball from Son on the counter-attack and a confident, composed, composed finish into the top corner for the second. And then a third, a daisy cutter finish um, along the ground into the far corner with a lot of power, showing an array of finishes he mm. still has and he's still got that pace about him. He's still got that quality, we all know. And that that's now nine goals and eight starts in the Premier League and um, yeah a lot of the, I think all of them have come from I think bottom half teams uh, uh, Palace Burnley Brighton Southampton and now today but if you look at the the games where where we didn't beat the bottom half teams where Gareth Bell should have been playing yeah. and, he, and he wasn't it just shows why he should have been playing in those agreed. games absolutely agreed he, always, he should always he always has the quality to hurt these kind of oppositions night for sure in his I sleep get, he can do I, that I get it when he doesn't play against the better teams like a Man City where he's asked to track back but against like you know you've got 10 oppositions there where he can come in maybe more than 10 he's got more than 10 oppositions there where he can come in and look as quality as he did today and I, I genuinely believe that yeah and he was fantastic today and obviously some with a really great finish. 25 yards um, at the end of the game to round it off and, uh, and get the fourth goal and it was a good attacking dominant display I thought we, we controlled the game really really well I thought we were creating chances throughout the game Kane seemed a little disappointed he didn't get on the score sheet he also tried he, there was something a bit off of Kane today yeah, I don't I know what it was I, that as well. I don't know what it was I don't think like other times you've said, people have said oh he looks tired of what I don't think it was that it's just something a bit off with him his finishing was a bit off he's his I don't know, his his body language is a, was a bit strange. I don't know what it was, but... Um, Do you reckon this is, is what the it start? Is. I don't know. I, I don't want to read too much into it. It was just one of those days for Kane. But he wasn't involved in any of the goals. Um, all he, if the couple of chances he did have, he didn't. Um, he kind of scuffed or uh, were putting wide and stuff. And um, look, he wasn't awful. It wasn't like a 0 out of 10 performance. It was just, he was just a bit off the pace, um, mm. Harry Kane. So is, that is what it is. It look. When there's that much talk around him, is obviously sometimes he can get into his head and whatnot. I don't, I, I don't know if, that, if it's that or anything, but um, he, he just he was. It's very rare that Spurs score so many goals and he's not involved in any of them. Yeah, it's true. Um, but look, it is what it is. Yeah. Um, uh, Aurier and I thought Regulon pushing really hard the pitch yeah. as well. I mean, really it's well. the first time in a while our fullbacks have had a really good performance, in my opinion. Probably I think since that when we played Palace and Burnley in those yeah, games. Yeah, I mean, I think Aurier's been poor the last couple of games he's played. I think Regulon's been poor uh, the last couple of games he's played. So it was a nice uh, breath of fresh air to have them back in the side and playing well. Um, Deli Alley, uh, first game, uh, first start yeah. in a while. I th <laughs> With Deli Alley, yeah, I thought that, I thought he was getting around the pitch well. I thought that he was, I wouldn't say sharp, but I thought that he was getting in and amongst it and, and, and trying to make stuff happen with pretty much little quality. But I think that he did provide positively to the team, though. Yeah, um, I thought he was decent. I think nice actually, little nutmeg in there as well. Yeah, I thought there were a couple moments where he was showing a bit of confidence, and um, a couple of that one of the goals, a couple of the goals actually in the second half. One of them, he plays a really beautiful outside the boot pass to Aurier, which sets up the third goal. And I think one of his um, interceptions set up one of the goals, Cumbrum, which will set up a chance or something. Um, I think the fourth goal actually, his interception was part of the fourth goal. So that was that was good stuff from Delhi. I, I thought I thought Delhi I thought Delhi was all right today. I mean, I saw saw a lot of polarizing views in the comments and stuff like that some people just saying he was I, shit something he was good I, and i think he was somewhere in between yeah i don't think he was shit i don't think he was it was great either i thought a few moments where he's in and around the penalty box and he didn't really show enough sharpness for me but then when he was in a bit of a deeper position that's when he showed more promise actually when he had a bit more space mm. he wasn't closed down as much so that was good i thought sheffield united were extremely lucky to get away with a var call which wasn't a red card oh, i yeah. thought flex stamping on the 
Celso. Um, considering some of the red cards we've seen this season, Balbuena's one, the Vestergaard one, um, the one uh, Leeds against Man City, where uh, people were saying, oh, is it an accident? Fleck didn't mean to stamp on the Celso's face and stuff like that. I mean, apparently, if, if, if either intent matters or it doesn't. If it doesn't matter, then those three red cards shouldn't have been red cards. If it does matter, uh, so if, if then, um, sorry, if it does matter, those three shouldn't have been red cards. If it doesn't is, matter, then this one has to be a red is card. It, is it so much to ask from the referees that we have a bit of consistency in the game? Mm -hmm. That's all I ask. I'm not asking for that to be a red card or not to be a red card. I mean, just, just keep the decisions consistent. That's all I asked. I thought if if those if if intent doesn't matter, then that has to be a red because he completely stamped on his face. If it, if he gets in his eye or is could have broken his cheek or something, that was really really poor. And I actually think looking at it back as well, yes, um, it's hard to know if there was real intent, but he hundred percent had enough time to pull his. But it leg looked away. like he was looking at him. It was really bad. From I thought from Fleck, it I thought like it was, was really bad, and I thought he was extremely lucky not to get away with a, not to to get away with a red card for that uh, foul on the cell. So. Um, but other than that, um, the game went on without much incident. I thought it was a routine win. People, I've seen people on social media and whatnot um, talking about, you know, this is the Tottenham Warner City attacking football and all this stuff. Look at look how good we've been. I'm, and I'm thinking, I'm sitting here thinking, I think we've we've seen this before, like this season before. I don't think it's anything new. I don't think this is a new kind of way of playing or a new system we played. I mean, I've seen first of all, we beat Sheffield United three one early in the season, and what was quite a convincing performance. Um, we beat Burnley, we beat Palace in very convincing ways, where we kept going for for goals and stuff like that. So I'm even gonna... even in the Newcastle game earlier on the season, where we didn't win, but we played very well, and we exactly. were like literally gung ho, get tired, attack after. But I think it's coming in like. Um, in random games here and there under Jose Mourinho, but we've seen it with Ryan Mason now, two games and two attacking performances, albeit against two sides lower in the table. Yeah, look, we smashed Southampton 5-2 yeah. early no, in the season, know, didn't we? So, look, I'm, I'm not going to sit here and say we've got our Tottenham back or, you know, Mason's got us attacking We definitely do not have our Tottenham yeah. back. We definitely do not have yeah. our Tottenham back and we will not have our Tottenham back until these cretins are out of the club and I call on everyone watching this, everyone watching this, to get down to the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium on the 5th of May on Saturday. I think the, it starts at 12 o'clock. So get down there, tell your friends, tell your friends to tell your friends and tell those friends to tell those friends. Tell because your grandparents. Your exactly. Aunties, tell your, your grandparents. Mm -hmm. Tell everyone, man. We want to make it a massive, a massive event. We need to get thousands and thousands and thousands of people down there. No matter how this season ends, Enoch out. Never forget what they tried to do. Never, yeah. ever, ever forget. Um, but look, that is it. That is your instant match reaction. We move on to the post-match fan show now, where it is your chance to have your say. Thank you, everyone, for joining us today. Tottenham 4, Sheffield United nil. Gareth Bell rolling back the years with a hat-trick. And yeah, it was nice to watch. Like, subscribe and comment. And as always, come, come on, on, you Spurs. Spurs.